IPFS, which as you can see stands for Interplanetary File System. Uh, so what is IPFS to begin? IPFS is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed file system that seeks to connect all computing devices with the same system of files. So IPFS builds on uh, and combines um, some technologies that have been developed over the years, including uh, distributed hash tables, block exchanges like BitTorrent, version control like Git, and self-certified file systems. Um, so quote down here from Juan Bennett, who is um, credited as being the founder. Um, IPFS is a distributed file system which synthesizes successful ideas from previous peer-to-peer -peer systems. The contribution of IPFS is simplifying, evolving, and connecting proven techniques into a single cohesive system greater than the sum of its parts. A couple more quotes from the creator. We should be building the web so that it should be able to work for interplanetary communication. The problem is that we have this whole underlying theory of the web being a network of data, but it's not. It's a network of addresses. Um, so given this example here, uh, you have this PNG of this little square here um, at an address, example.com, which is really um, just a pointer to an IP address, uh, an actual location, uh, and then the file path to that um, desired PNG. Um, utilizing the client server model um, with different devices connected to a single server, when the server go down, goes down, they go down. Um, so IPFS is distributed. Um, okay. So you have a centralized system over there on the left-hand side um, with different uh, stations you know, over the link connecting to the server. Um, however, when the server goes down, uh, the stations go down. Um, that's a single point of failure. Uh, in a decentralized system, um, if a single server goes down, uh, there's mitigation of failure. Um, in a distributed system, uh, when one goes down, uh, the others are A-OK. -okay. But like, modern servers are great, so what's the big deal, right? Everyone's thinking it, Brian's thinking it. <laughs> modern issues surrounding centrally located content. So I don't have a ton of time to go into like all of these in depth, but just a couple of brief examples of why centrally located content poses some uh, problems. Um, so your iPhone processor surpasses Apollo 11's, yet if Google Docs server goes offline, you can't continue working with someone in the same room as you. The most advanced network in history should simply be more, be more resilient by now. Uh, on a more serious note, uh, China was this year's worst, this, this according to freedomhouse.org, uh, that measures um, freedom of the web and communication. So China was this year's worst abuser of internet freedom. A criminal law amendment added seven year prison terms for spreading rumors on social media, a charge often used against those who criticize authorities. Also, just in a generalized sense, we've, we've created a massive amount of extremely personal and meaningful content and data that's essentially resting upon the goodwill and diligence of the people who own or control the servers we use. Um, and this is a quote by uh, Dr. Vince Cerf. Uh, we digitize our images and sounds and text uh, in the expectation that this somehow provides these things with immortality. We may, however, be creating a digital dark age in which our descendants will know nothing of our history and the products of our society. That quote just blew my mind when I read it. Uh, and I got into this black hole of reading about digital vellum, which is down there in the extra references if you want to look into that. Uh, and the Internet Archive is a service that is sort of seeking to protect against that. Um, interesting to look into. Um, so what's the common thread between these issues? Our web is a network of addresses, uh, not a network of data. Um, so you have uh, you know, this request at the top um, to an IP address uh, for a specific file. Um, it's address-based, meaning that um, you on the left over there are going to request it from that address and it's going to send it back. Um, however, uh, if it's a dead link, there's a loss of connection, or the content is censored by a governing body, anything like that, uh, no access for you. Um, however, if there's a request uh, for something over IPFS, you can see the, um, the protocol there uh, in the URL, you know, IPFS protocol. And then the, the second thing there, rather than an IP address, is actually uh, a hash, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, but it's essentially content-based rather than address-based. So your link um, actually equals the content. Uh, and again, just a little bit bigger there, so you can see those um, address versus uh, content. Uh, so anyone um, 
So it can retrieve the sought after data from anyone with this unique hash, uh, given IPS, IPFS protocol. IPFS builds a Merkle dog, a uh, directed acyclic graph where links between objects are cryptographic hashes of the targets embedded in the sources. Uh, this is a generalization of the Git data structure. So uh, like immutable, this brings up the, you know, the concept of immutable versus immutable link. So what does your link really point to? Uh, an address that can change or the data itself? Uh, and Merkle linking is built on immutable data that does not repeat. Uh, funny example here, the slides.com slash my username slash the name of my presentation. Uh, what's that a link to? It's not a link to the data. Uh, it's a link to the address uh, where someone is holding it and where I hope they do not lose it before my presentation. Um, so kind of like one way that you can use this uh, is actually in your CLI um, with a tool. Uh, so you would IPFS init. Uh, you can begin adding some files to that directory. Uh, so just IPFS add whatever. Um, adds the files you specify and creates unique hashes for their location and memory. Uh, you can navigate to that hash or, or repo and view the directory contents. Uh, you can still use this over HTTP. Um, so if you initialize IPFS uh, daemon, it exposes an HTTP endpoint, uh, which can be hit from the browser, uh, which will give you um, that feedback there, tell you that daemon's ready. And then from the browser, you can hit you know, whatever host, um, IPFS, and then that hash, which will take you to the directory uh, that you initialize with the IPFS CLI tool. Um, and then again, it's, in, it's encrypted by a cryptographic hash. So anyone who has the content also has the hash, and so they can serve this content to others. So it removes the authority and the location addressing from the equation. Um, so IPFS data structures are represented as DAGs. Um, so these can be Unix files, directories, blob tree, commit, et cetera. Um, funny thing, you can even build a SQL table on top of IPFS. Uh, and then files are DAG nodes, um, big files split into many. Um, this is a little um, preview of the IPFS object format. Um, so, you know, it has the, uh, the string and the, the hash. Uh, so the, it's an extremely flexible way to store data. So the cool thing is the only uh, requirements are that the object references be content address uh, encoded in the format above, uh, and it grants applications complete control over the data field. Um, so that they can use uh, a custom data format that they choose, which IPFS may, may or may not understand. Um, and some examples of uh, different things that the you know, IPFS is able to store. Um, this is a table brought in for like a Merkle hash, and this is like anybody who's using Git's essentially using this. Um, where these data blocks are like the actual data in memory. Um, you know, hashes 00, zero and zero 01 are uh, the hash values uh, of data blocks L1 and L2. And then hash 0 up there uh, is the concatenation of hashes 00, zero and zero 01. Um, so servers and central bodies are great. Um, current internet protocols allow tons of scaling and web technology, and it's awesome. However, our communication should be modern enough and resilient enough to withstand failures that can be solved with distributed systems. Um, and our problem remains the same no matter how we evolve the technology on either end. As you can see, you know, at the top here, you have the application layer, uh, then the transport layer, uh, internet layer of the protocol, um, network uh, interface layer, and then uh, like where the actual content's residing. Uh, and as you can see, like the bottleneck or the, the middle of this is, is the IP protocol, which is address-based. Um, the bottleneck is the protocol requiring an address on a specific computer or server. So we can get better at catering to the problems presented by this paradigm, um, you know, get better uh, or more servers with while location-based addressing remains uh, protocol, or change the way it functions completely. So make the data itself the basis rather than the address of its owner, and make everyone who has it a new host. Uh, so to recap, interplanetary file systems a protocol designed to create a permanent and distributed method of sharing files is content addressable peer-to-peer -peer, uh, hypermedia distribution protocol. Um, and so, you know, essentially, uh, however it finds its way to us, peer-to-peer uh, -peer and truly data-centric networks of the future, a couple people using it right now, um, FireChat built, built over MeshKit SDK. Uh, it's a chat app that you don't need to be connected to the internet to use. Um, Storage, IO, Open Garden, who I think owns Fire Chat, um, are utilizing you know, technology similar to this. Um, yeah, it's definitely the future. There's some resources, 
And that is my presentation.